G'day, welcome to Unity with Heaven. My name is Joseph and today we're continuing our devotions. Yesterday we were reading the beginning part of Matthew, uh, the first 12 verses of chapter 2. And now we're going to continue and finish the second half of Matthew chapter 2. Now this is three pieces. And the first piece, uh, Joseph and Mary and the baby Jesus travel to Egypt. Uh, and then the second part is while they're in Egypt, when uh, Herod um, kill all the innocent babies. And then when they return back, they end up not going back to Jerusalem or Bethlehem, but they go to Nazareth. And so I was, we, we're going to read the scripture and then I'm just going to make a few comments about that. Okay, right, so let's read the first portion. That's Matthew chapter 2 from verse 13. That's now the flight into Egypt. Now when they had departed, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise, take the young child and his mother, flee to Egypt, and stay there until I bring you word. For Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. When he arose, he took the young child and his mother by night, and departed for Egypt, and was there until the death of Herod, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet, saying, Out of Egypt I called my son. Okay, that's uh, Matthew 2, from verse 13 to 15. Right, so let's read the second portion. That's the massacre of the innocents. Then Herod, when he saw that he was deceived by the wise men, was exceedingly angry, and he sent forth and put to death all the male children who were in Bethlehem and in all its districts, from two years old and under, according to the time which he had determined from the wise men. Then was fulfilled what was spoken by Jeremiah the prophet, saying, A voice was heard in Ramah, lamentation, weeping, and great mourning, Rachel weeping for her children, refusing to be comforted, because they are no more. All right. uh, and then the final part is when they came back from Egypt uh, to Nazareth. Now when Herod was dead, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt, saying, Arise, take the young child and his mother, and go to the land of Israel, for those who sought the young child's life are dead. Then he arose, took the child and his mother, and came into the land of Israel. But when he heard that Archelaus was reigning over Judea, instead of his father Herod, he was afraid to go there. And being warned by God in a dream, he turned aside into the region of Galilee. And he came and dwelt in a city called Nazareth, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophets, he shall be called a Nazarene. All right, so that is up to Matthew chapter 2 verse 23. All right, so we read those three portions of scripture um, and I want to make a few uh, notes and just talk a little bit about it. All right, so in the first part, there is uh, this um, place where the angel appears to Joseph in the night and he tells him in a dream, I want you to take Jesus and the mother Mary and flee to Egypt. Now it's interesting, the scripture tells us that Joseph then immediately, still in that night, took the mother and the child and flew to Egypt. Now for me that's just amazing. I want to ask you, when did you sleep in your bed and God spoke to you and you immediately got up in the middle of the night and you did exactly what he told you to do, okay? Now maybe you have done that. But who of you were in one city, in one country, and then the Lord spoke to you in a night, and then in that night, you take a baby, a newborn baby, or okay, a baby probably about two years old or so, you take a young child and uh, your wife, and you guys leave your house that night and go to another country. That, for me, that's incredible how obedient Joseph was and and how he immediately 100% obeyed the voice of the angel that appeared to him. So for me, that's quite incredible. Right? Then um, uh, uh, Matthew, because he was speaking to Jews when he wrote the gospel of Matthew, he always gives us references from the Old Testament to connect uh, the Messiah to prophecies that were spoken over his life. And so in Isaiah, um, we we read the scripture where it says, Out of Egypt I called my son. 
So there's many, many prophecies that was fulfilled through the life of Jesus, and that was one of them. All right, so uh, that's probably all that I can say about them leaving. Uh, so let's just quickly think about Egypt. So Egypt at that stage was already uh, part of the Roman Empire. So there was not a governor over Egypt. Uh, the Caesar himself actually ruled over Egypt. Um, it was Caesar Augustus. Now there was a big Jewish community that already lived in Egypt. Um, histor historians say that community could have had as many as 1 million Jews living in Egypt. And so it's very easy for you if you were in the Roman system, in the Roman Empire, to travel between the regions. And so uh, it should have been fairly easy for Joseph and Mary and Jesus to travel to Egypt. Uh, another question that we can think about is how long did they stay in Egypt? Uh, most historians think they were there uh, for three years. Um, uh, I also think so. Uh, some think they were there for six years. All right? uh, but when they came back, we read there that King Herod already died. And then uh, the two kings, uh, so it was these two regions, Judea at the, at the south, uh, and then Galilee in the north. Uh, this was two of the sons now. I think there was five sons of Herod in five regions. But now on those two areas, the, on the southern part, Archelaus, let's say Archelaus, he ruled in the south, uh, and then Herod Antipas ruled in Galilee. Now, uh, uh, Ar Archelaus, he was quite a, um, a wicked ruler, um, he, he easily killed people, people that he felt threatened him in his position. Uh, and it would definitely would have been a bad plan for Joseph and Mary to live in Judea. So what they did, uh, the angel also directed them to go back to their hometown. Now Joseph and Mary was very familiar with Nazareth. That's where they grew up. So they knew Nazareth very well. So that when they moved there, of course there was this risk of, you know, Mary had a baby but she wasn't married yet with Joseph you know that the all but um, you know the scripture doesn't talk about it so it, it probably wasn't an issue uh, also if you would travel to uh, Nazareth Nazareth uh, and you can actually go even today to the place where they say um, Joseph and Mary and Jesus lived um, when you go there you'll see it's very close to the mount they call it the mount of precipice okay now what's interesting about that mount of precipice um, later when jesus uh, was preaching he came to nazareth and he read to them uh, that scripture out of isaiah uh, about the spirit of the lord is upon me uh, and then when he said that you know uh, the pharisees wanted to take jesus and they wanted to throw him off the mountain okay that mountain where they wanted to throw him is just a stone's throw away from the house where jesus grew up uh, and that's the place where they wanted to throw him off the mountain so that, that's quite interesting so if you actually travel to israel and you go to galilee then you'll see there is the house uh, where jesus grew up and yeah just close to it there is the hill uh, mount of precipice where they wanted to throw jesus down all right so that's uh, something that's interesting to me uh, also uh, um, uh, matthew says that jesus moving to nazareth was a fulfillment of a prophetic word by the prophets that says he shall be called nazarene now what's interesting about that statement is that um if you go and look in the Old Testament, you can't find a prophecy in our Bible that says he shall be called the Nazarene. So that is probably the only one of the prophecies that Matthew says, well, this is a fulfillment of, of a prophecy. That's a fulfillment of a prophecy that we cannot find that prophecy in the Old Testament. Now, one of the places where we could possibly uh, um, find it is the name Nazareth. So in the Nazareth, the word means a shoot or a little shoot. So you have a tree or a, a fig tree and then a new branch starts to grow and that branch is called a shoot. So now Nazareth means a little shoot. All right? Now in Isaiah chapter 11 verse 1 where you read, There shall come forth a rod from the stem of Jesse 
and a branch shall grow out of his roots okay and so uh, that that branch that word branch there uh, also is the same word that's the root word for uh, nazareth all right so that's a, a maybe oh a, a place we um matthew got that scripture from uh, but it's not a specific scripture in the old testament that says he shall be called a nazarene okay so i just thought i'll i'll mention that uh, uh, another thing to take notice of is of course the moment the wise man left and uh, here it discovered that he was deceived then he didn't know who this baby was but he knew the baby would be born in bethlehem he also determined from when they said this they saw the star so you know a few months passed now they haven't come back to him so he said okay let's kill all the babies two years and younger from bethlehem and from the surrounding area all right now um theologians has debated about how many children was it that was um killed uh, and most of them agree it was not a, a big big amount um, you know it could have been maybe um 100 children uh, but it was not thousands and thousands of children uh, Bethlehem didn't have such a big population so if you would just say how many of those people in a population would have been two years and younger it probably would not have been that many but it was a terrible thing doesn't matter if it's one baby or 10 babies or 100 babies that are killed it's a terrible thing when babies are killed uh, what's also a bible uh, pattern is that every time when the lord raise a new generation or a leader that is going to bring deliverance that's going to bring change uh, then usually the king or the principality that's in charge of that king always wants to kill all the babies so when the demons sensed that the lord has raised up a deliverer for the israelites in egypt then the pharaoh killed all the babies two years and younger and then the same thing happened with herod when he realized but the christ the messiah the king of kings is going to come and possibly take over his position uh, as a king then he killed all the babies two years and younger uh, and what's interesting uh, in the time that we live today this is a time where the lord is doing a new thing a new move of god and more than any other time in the history of mankind are babies killed today now we tend to think the romans were cruel or we think the egyptians were cruel but unfortunately our our uh how can i say it secular governments that we have today are really the cruelest of all the governments that really existed because uh, we're talking about hundreds of thousands of babies are killed every year through abortion and it's legal they say it's legal you can kill the baby all right remember you your spirit man enters your physical body when you are just a day or a few hours after conception that's when your spirit man enters in so a scientist actually has looked at uh, the egg and the sperm when they come together and conception happens uh, a few hours later then they see like a, a light that that shine uh, and usually the understanding is the moment that happens that's when the heart starts beat and when the spirit of that person enters into them so if you ask the question how old are you you can take your birth date and you can add between seven and nine months to your birth date and that's actually how old you are you your physical being here on the earth okay so you can say okay how many how long has it been since your birthday you know i'm celebrating my fifth birthday or my 10th birthday or my 20th or my 50th birthday but actually you are probably eight or nine months older than that amount of course you your life didn't start the moment you were birthed your life start the moment you were conceived okay. so that's very important for us to believe that and so therefore when you kill a baby in a womb it's like killing a baby okay it's not a you're killing a person it's not a um, something that's growing and one day will be a child uh, it it is a person uh, because they have a spirit they have a heartbeat they feel um, uh, they they are a person all right they're just uh, growing in their mother's womb uh, and today thousands and thousands of babies are being killed uh, and that's what happened in the day of jesus and that's happened in the day of moses so what happened in the day of moses there was a big change people came out of egypt into 
the desert and then the promised land. In the time of Jesus, the Gentiles couldn't get saved. Now they can be saved. So what do you think is happening right now? These babies that are being killed, are they not the ones that are the, um, how can I say it, the larger company that are bringing in the coming of the Lord Jesus as He's coming back? To this earth all right so it's a very very important generation this young generation and that's why the enemy is so set on killing the young babies all right but you know just like god had a plan with jesus and he could use um uh, an angel angel to speak to joseph and move them to egypt and then to galilee to save jesus just like the lord could use miriam to to make a a basket for Jesus to, to be put into the water and then a Pharaoh's daughter to find Jesus. He obviously, she obviously knew it was a Jew. She didn't kill him. And then to get um, uh, Moses' mother to wean him, to, to give him milk, to nurse him. Um, so And then he grew up in Pharaoh's courts in the same way how God can protect the deliverer. In the same way the Lord has a way how he is bringing deliverance to our generation in this day. Remember, God is not caught by surprise. It doesn't matter how much evil there is. God is always good. He's always full of light. And he always have a plan. And that's what he did for Jesus. And that's what he will do for you. So yesterday evening, uh, we were praying at church. Uh, and we were praying about, I shall not be moved. And then the Lord said to me, the enemy shall not move you. But if God gives you a command to move, then you will be obedient to God and you will move. And I think that's the same thing that happened with, with Joseph. The enemy couldn't move him. God said, I want you to go to Egypt. Now I want you to go to Galilee. So God has a plan and a purpose for each one of our lives. And we just need to be obedient to him and he will keep us safe. I want to pray for you. Father, thank you for each one that's joining me on this time of uh, meditation and devotion. Lord, I bless them. Lord, may the seed of your word uh, grow in them and produce uh, 60 and 100 fold. Return in the name of Jesus. All glory belongs to you.